Wait, better than mine. Were we in there? That's gotta be where she means, yeah? Oh, mining supplies. A drill! Oh. Worth a shot. Huh. Did we... Did I... Tell me I didn't throw it away. Sell it. Hmm. More little four rock things. I wonder if that's a vibrato thing. Like if they have another piece of crap for any pickup. It's like, hey! Rocket lantern. Oh, there we go. Grab the bit. Yeah, it wouldn't let me do anything with that. This is just, there's just dudes living down here. North to deepest delve. That's where Jeff went. That's where I would kill a bunch of people. Okay. Uh, back to Dr. Morton's. That was easy. I like it when it sends me to places I've already been. Okay. Hey, that's great. A little bit of surface rust, but if my calculations are right, this should do just fine for our purpose. Come on, let's go hook it up right now. Well, well yeah, let's. How exciting. Oh, she didn't really waste any time. Ladder leads down to the tunnel Josie just opened. That mining rig's fast as heck. Oh, shit. Dr. Morton seems extremely excited to be here. Well, the lights work really well. Hi there. Let's go talk to Josie. Is bristling with arcane power. Well, I should. Let's talk to Josie and then we'll touch it. That was crazy fast, Josie. Jeez, you got the lights set up here and already and everything. Well, while you're out running errands for me, I didn't have much to do except plan this out. Having to fight an anthropomorphocyte was not part of my plan, though. Uh, what now? The angry stone fellow over there. Boy, what I wouldn't give to be able to examine one up close. Unfortunately, getting mashed into a pulp would probably hurt my chances of getting tenure. I'll see what I can do. I'm gonna poke this rock, though. Ooh. Hey there, fella. How, how you doing? Oh, there's a couple of you. Oh, you ain't too tough. I'm gonna whack you. And Susie, you do your best. Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna go well for you. You're a chunky little fella, ain't you? A beam of arcane lightning? I don't think so, friend. Good job, Susie. That's thinking like a goblin. You really cursed those hexes. Nothing happens. Well, that one's already open. What now? Dr. Warden seems extremely excited to be here. Wow, that's an extremely interesting rock. Isn't it incredible? This will definitely get me into the history books, or at least get my research paper into an important arca arcano geology journal. Thanks so much for your help. Oh, it's nothing. I'll be giving you an assistant credit when I publish, of course. I'd like to give you more material reward, but I spent most of the grant money on the drilling rig. Oh, how about this? I don't need this hextite sample anymore. Maybe you could wear it as a little hat. <laughs> got an arcane geode hat. It's really good for a wizard. Has crackling with arcane energy and weighs almost nothing. It's not very stylish, but if anyone makes fun of you for wearing it, you can just vaporize them. Oh, and then you can silver plate it for another AP. This is a tight squeeze. Oh. Touch the rocks. Touch the rocks. Touch the rocks. Oh, I see. Maybe I don't see. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they go away. There's not always three. There's two. Oh, 
seems two slightly close together. Is that going to bring the three back? No. I move the two to the left. I brought that one back. That's the three in the front again. That looks good. That's definitely different. Nope! That was bad. That was bad. Oh, my science. Is there another thing in here that I'm just not seeing? Uh, what'd you do? Nothing happened. Dangerous from this side. Oh, shit. Oh, I guess I could have skipped the little, little dude. Huh. Okay. Well, I have the moxie, uh, mysticality. Like, there's got to be a way to make all the hex gods go away. Uh. Maybe I'll look into this and we'll come back to it. Alright, cool. Well, thanks for the hat, Susie. Or Josie. I don't know how the hell your name is. Divas Delve for a minute. Uh, skeleton Lumberjack. One of them Johnny Come Lately Skeleton Axie Beard fans. Sure. Didn't even, didn't even give me an axe. Looks like there's a couple more locations out here. Uh, robot. found Halloway's hideaway. You see wisps of smoke rising above the pines nearby and spur Tim over to investigate. The source of the little shop nestled deep in the forest, almost as though the proprietor doesn't want customers to find it. You jot the location on the map so you don't forget where it is. Weird place to find a house so far from anything civilized. And just me or there are a lot of squirrels around here. No, this is in fact a lot of squirrels. Uh, howdy. Name's Halloway. Hab Halloway. Sorry for the chittering. Ain't seen another person in a long time. That's, uh, not surprising. This place is pretty secluded. What do you do here? Mostly I, uh, sell pine cones to squirrels. He frowns. Well, I, I used to. Huh. Alright. Halloway chews on something he had stored away in one of his cheeks. What, uh, happened to the squirrels? Well, one day they were here, and the next day they were bloodstains. I had the creepiest dream that night. I dreamt a little girl with big empty white eyes jumped in through my bedroom window and asked me if I wanted to have a tea party. Uh, let's talk about something else. What you selling? Oh, I was expecting pine cones. Oh, there they are. Pine trees use them for reproduction, animals use them for food, and grandmothers use them for making decorative little owls. Our peanut butter. Jar of Gimlet Peanut Butter, a brand primarily noted for arguments about how to pronounce it. According to the manufacturer, it rhymes with Himlet. And a clip-on bow tie. You would never wear this, but maybe you'll find a child that needs help getting ready for a funeral. That definitely sounds like something that would happen out west. How bizarre. And a bunch of needles. Well, thanks. I, we definitely didn't have anything to do with that. I mean, that could have been any creepy doll child. 
Off to the side of the trail, you see a big billboard reading Alamo Rent a Mule this way. You mark the location down on your map in case you're even in the market to rent a mule. Oh, that's okay. That would be where we would fix one guy's problem. This place seems kind of familiar. Yeah, but I can't quite place it. Something uh, starts with an A? I can find out. Hey! You're not a mule. This year's model. Rentals and complaints. Look. This is a bunch of features you can pay for extra when you rent a mule, such as fuzzy dice, steel belted rails, side of coleslaw, two-way sneeze through wind vent, self-kicking tires, getting kicked insurance, self-kicking tires, anti-lock hooves, sound dampening shoes, deluxe eyeball wipers, saddle warmer, getting kicked insurance, smaller list than usual. Looks like this is where you go to rent a mule, just judging from the sign, you know. Howdy, welcome to Alamo Rent a Mule, how can I help you? I'd like to rent a mule. Excuse me, did you ride up on here on a horse? Yep. Yeah. So, what do you need a mule for? I guess you have a point. Please remember us in the future, your horse breaks down though. Oh god, another customer. If I didn't have enough to deal with already. Oh, the paperwork and the heat and the mule bites and someone keeps stealing my lunch out of the employee icebox. Trick knuckles acting up again. Gosh, sure would be nice to get a little peace and quiet. Nope, gotta stand here at this counter all day. Hardwood floor isn't helping my sciatica, let me tell you. Don't even get me started on what they pay us around here. The mules eat better than I do. Uh-huh. And if that wasn't bad enough, I went and dropped my daughter's birthday present down a stupid hole at a stupid mine. Anyone go and get it for me? <laughs> yeah, right. You mean this bracelet? Oh, thanks a bundle. Real tragedy there. Are so few selfless and kind-hearted people like you in the world, willing to do a hugely dangerous favor for a total stranger without any expectation of reward. Yeah, sure. Huh, well, we found where that goes. Any more wandering? We're pretty filled out. <gasps> the curious flat plane. It's an El Vibrato thing. What's with these weird blocks? Good question. Looks like some kind of ancient road or something. Runs north, far as I can see. Gets real wide, too. And it does. I'd keep going, but I'm not animated for climbing. It's alright, Deadman. Rest easy. This ladder's missing about 70% of its rungs. It's so dangerous. Call OSHA. I need Moxie to climb down here. Oh, hi there. This poor explorer, explorer didn't make it down the ladder in one piece. Bunch of El Vibrato stuff. Hi there. Definitely the largest hexagon you've ever seen. Dark monolith, more energized. Hi. What thing? We should replace that. Primary terminal, select secondary terminal. Power terminal? Power destination? Roberto containment? Other adjustment terminal? Increased weather machine power? Cool. Garbage terminal? Garbage return? A huge pile of vibrato scrap. Neat. Hell yeah. Alright, cool. And you're online. Yeah, power terminal. Okay, well, let's head back to the deep delve mine. Oh, a uh, gunshot, it sounded like a gunshot, but less of a bang and more of a pee-ow! You creep up on a spot cautiously and find a goblin fiddling with a large pistol with magical sigils engraved all over it. The goblin seems to be adjusting one of the sigils with a small engraving chisel. Hello, what doing? To adjusting new pistol I'm making. Making yourself? Yep, pretty good, if can self saying. Gun is looking pretty good. Is gun also for buying? I'll just buy the pistol. It'd be nice. I don't like not being. I like being nice to goblins sometimes. That's really good. This pistol's carved with magical glyphs, even on the inside of the barrel, which makes it really bad as a gun. <laughs> That's very silly. That's down to four, right? Online. 
looks good. That looks good. Uh huh. Let's not do that yet. Let's do some stuff. Let's finish heading out west, shall we? Uh, we need to go back to Frisco. I don't think there's any more locations. I think we just about found everything. Might be one or two more to the south. But I think we're okay. Okay. Right. Gotta follow the tracks now that we can see. Oh, yeah, because if you can't see, you can't see the tracks to follow. You jump on the Tim's back and ride like the wind, following the railroad tracks back into the desert. When you finally catch up, you stand up on Tim's saddle and leap onto the back of the train like a real badass, just barely catching the edge of the roof and pulling yourself up. Here's hoping you don't have to do that again. Your stuntman could have been killed. Looks like Susie decided not to join you on account of not having a stuntman, so you're on your own until you're back to Frisco. What about Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo Bill? Feeling neither fair nor square. I stole this train fair and square, and I'm not giving it back. Take the train back by force. Hey, Buffalo 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 Bill's here to trivialize the encounter. Neat. Take that, Norton. You dick. Had just about enough of this. Well, you've kicked this whole Norton problem down the road a ways. I mean, down the train a ways. I mean, he ran further down a ways down the train. Oh good, somebody built a rickety-ass bridge in between these train cars. Oh, inside the stolen train. This barrel is labeled pick, Pickled Pig Knuckles. Try saving that five times fast. We can leave to go back to Frisco. Hand fruit. This end up with the arrows pointing in different directions. Pickled crackers. Oh, don't tempt me. Nubs. Keys, you say? Hmm. Should have said key instead of keys. It's the cargo car key. An unlickable... Un Pickable plot brand lock. You unlock the door. Look at all those fellas. What are they doing? Playing fight emperor? Nope. Norton. Norton buggered off. It's bad to be walking stupid up here. Whoa, mind the gap. Hey, fellas. These guys are so preoccupied with the door to the rear of the car, they don't notice you prowling around behind them. The one in the back has a shiny key attached to his belt. It must be the key to the dining car, because it has dining car stamped in letters big enough to read from here. Well, the hell with you guys. They're clearly dangerous wrestlers, and I'm an honorable kind of sort, and oh god, you guys don't have enough hit points. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I am more demon cow than man anymore. Okay. Lock the dining car. Ooh, lovely. Flowers. One of those fancy silver dome things. You've never wanted anything more in your life than you want to lift up this dome and see what's under it. But you're not sure you can muster the amount of culinary expertise it requires to properly reveal a dish of such presumed quality. I do have quite a bit of mysticality. Voila! Oh, it's just a cream pie. Shaving cream. What kind of lunatics are running the food service on this train? It's no good to eat, but it's very aerodynamic. The table looks like it got jostled around in some kind of scuffle, but the flowers are still standing. This table didn't deserve flowers. <laughs> Door between the dining car and the sleeper car is welded shut. Norton, you fiend! <gasps> okay, there's Norton. You've got a clear shot at him from here if you want to throw the pie. You can't stop Emperor Norton. People really shouldn't refer to themselves in third person. Correct his grammar. We're going to hit him with a pie. Hell yeah. There's a... Wappa! Take that! Curses! Uh, I expected something more dramatic. Still cute, though. Why is this guy hanging on top of a moon train with a knife? Let's find out later. Go down here first. A messily scrawled note. The note says, I've hidden the key to the forward passenger car in my luggage to make it easier for me to murder everyone in the sleeper car. Sincerely, the train murderer. P.S. Come to the roof if you're the sleeper car in the next 55 minutes if you want a murdering. Crazy. One of these sleeping compartments must belong to the murderer. You open the door to the first passenger compartment. The sole occupant is a little boy about 10 years old wearing a blue suit and knickerbockers. Uh, hello, sir. Something wrong? Nothing you need to worry about, kid. I'm on the trail of, uh... A, a bad guy. You mean a murderer, sir? I'm pretty sure there's one on this train, and they don't call me the world's greatest detective for nothing. Uh, what's your name, kid? I probably shouldn't say, sir. There might be a copyright thing. Hey, okay, well. I'm pretty sure I can handle this. Just let me ask you one question, and you should lock the door after I'm gone. 
I understand, sir. What would you like to know? Are you on the roof of the train? Excuse me? Murderer left a note saying he's on the roof of the train. Are you? I... No, no sir. I'm, I'm, I'm in my passenger compartment? Right. Good. That'll be all then. This is a Monty Python skit, by the way. You open the door to the second passenger compartment and look inside. There's a portly man in a dapper gray suit with a tiny, meticulously waxed mustache, and I'd like to clarify, an enormously bushy one. Excusez-moi, is there some way I might be of assistance, monsieur? Sorry to bother you, there's a murderer on the loose, and I'm checking the passenger compartments. Sacre bleu! This is a very serious mon ami. Allow me to prefer you the use of my little gray cells. I don't know what that means, but no thank you. Let me just ask you one question. Why, certainly, I'm at your service. Are you on the roof of the train? The roof of the train, monsieur. Right now? That's right. No. I am here in conversation with you. Good. That's all, then. You open the door to the third passenger compartment and find nobody inside. Hmm. Since the note from the murderer said he was going to be on the roof of the train, that means he couldn't be in this passenger compartment. And since there's no one in this passenger compartment, whoever the compartment belongs to can only be, by process of elimination, be on the roof. Which means the person who rented this compartment must be the murderer. Probably. The only clue you find here is a luggage ticket, though, which has a number three on it. The passenger in this compartment is a middle-aged woman who's writing something in a notebook. She looks up as you enter and greets you in a friendly northeastern accent. Oh, shit, I don't know. Like, like Maine? I don't know. Hello, is there something you need, dear? Sorry to bother you, ma'am. I don't want to alarm you, but there's a murderer on board the train, and I'm investigating. A murderer on a train? My goodness, that would be a wonderful premise for my next novel. Sure, why not? Anyway, I need to ask you a question. Go right ahead, dear. According to my evidence, the murderer's on the roof of the train. Are you on the roof of the train? Uh, no? No, no, dear. All right, thank you for your time. Would you like a meat pie? They're homemade. No, no, thank you. Just have a look at this playing card before you go. <laughs> Goodbye, now. Find bag number three has the key to the four passenger car. That's very strong corroborating evidence for who your theory of the murder is. Well, you have to have a murder mystery on a train. Okay. But, also, we can't just let a murderer wander around willy-nilly. Let's just kick his ass, because I brought Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo Bill with me. Uh. Lasso. Thick leather rope. Oh, a lasso. That's two rounds. I should have made a, should have made a different rope. That's alright. Rope him! dun 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 and then I'm gonna move at him. Take that, nerd. Murder is disabled and does nothing. Get beefy. Can I do that more than once? Well, oh, damn it, I can. That's hilarious. Okay, get him. 574. Good lord. Beat his ass. Ah, his luggage tag was number three. Oh, we have to get the key to the door anyway. Well, good. I'm glad I beat him up, though. You can't just let a murderer wander around. To the passenger car. You finally make it to the passenger car. One car back from the locomotive, which may be confusing if you thought the locomotive meant the entire train. So I could just say the engine, except that that also refers to the engine itself, that is, the actual steam engine that makes the train go, and not just the frontmost car of the train. Anyway, you're in the passenger car. Get a little curtsy in there. Suddenly, Nor Norton clambers in the window. He must have dramatically clung to the side of the train in order to reveal at the last minute that he hadn't actually been defeated. Dang it. He runs into the, uh... Well, you know, the foremost car of the train, and locks the door. What a jerk. Hmm. Maybe you could get some of the passengers to help break down the door and arrest him. Maybe you could just kick the door down and shoot him until he can't bother anybody anymore. It's up to you. My newfangled pistol. Well, what do we need? Door to the locomotive. Confront Norton. Oh. <laughs> you pound on the door of the locomotive or engine or cab or car or whatever. Open up, Norton. No! All right, then I'm coming in. Oh, yeah? You and what army, tough guy? Well, that's back to the passengers. I'll get back to you on that. Hello there. 
lady's flipping through a book titled Birds of the Western Territory. Since most of the place is desert, it's not a very long book. Excuse me, ma'am? Yes? A uh, crazed psycho has taken over the train's engine car, and I need volunteers to help break down the door and arrest him. Oh my, I certainly wouldn't be of any help with that. I'm very conflict-averse. Uh, what if I told you he hates birds and is determined to outlaw them from the territory after he sees his power? That's very sly, but I know you're only saying that because you saw the book I was reading. Eh, yeah, you got me there. Any other ideas to convince me? Suddenly, you hear a tapping. A gentle tapping at the passenger window. What the? Russell? You open the window. Aw. Getting misty. And your pet crow, Russell, flaps in and perches on your shoulder. Well, hey, buddy. Good to see you. Ah! My gosh, what a beautiful crow. And he knows you? Oh, sure. Me and Russell go way back. I rescued him from a cat when he was only just out the nest and raised him as a pet. I set him free when I left home recently. What's he doing here? Has he been following you since? No. He probably just happened to be flying by, spotted me on the roof of the train, and recognized me. Crows are crazy smart like that. That's amazing. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have an avian friend like that. Well, I'm still going to be doing a lot of traveling after this, I figure, so I can't really drag Russell along with me, but I bet Russell wouldn't mind being pals with a nice lady in Frisco who helped save the train. What do you say, Russell? Russell calls again and flaps over to perch next to the lady. He lightly pecks at her shoulder in a friendly manner. My goodness, how could I refuse? It's a pleasure to meet you, Russell. My name's Annabelle. Awesome. I'll let you know when you're ready. This overweight man in a three-piece suit and bowler hat's probably a banker or something. His eyes are closed and his posture's relaxed, but the clench of his jaw betrays his aggravation. Excuse me? Harumph! Yes, what is it? Some crazy jerk calling himself Emperor Norton's hijacked a train, and I need volunteers to help me bust down the door and arrest him. I see, and? And will you help me? <laughs> No, I'd rather not. That sounds quite strenuous, perhaps even dangerous. Come on, please. No, I don't think so. I'm quite comfortable here, and I prefer to avoid stress. Ready, please. Again? No, I'm supposed to avoid things that might raise my blood pressure. Ready, please, with sugar on top? Sugar is one of those things. Ready, please, with gravy on top? Gravy is another. Look, please, just leave me alone. Please, 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 please. No, please, 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 please. No, please, 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 please. Stop that. Please, 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 please. I said no. Stop asking. You're really getting on my nerves. Please, please, I'll stop asking and you say yes. No, damn it. Please, 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 please. All right, God, fine, I'll help. Just leave me alone. Neat. This guy's totally pranticking, which means a word I made up that means ranting in a frantic panic. Everyone else is ignoring him as hard as they can. Hey, buddy, you okay? It's all a lie. We're never going to get to Frisco. Frisco probably doesn't even exist, man. They've been testing to see how long we can survive on complimentary peanuts and bottled water, and now they're driving us out of the desert in some kind of government camp. They're going to use our organs to fuel alien flying machines. Percussive maintenance, you say? Whap! <laughs> oh, sorry. I guess I, I, I lost it for a second there. You feel better? He rubs his jaw. Well, yes and no. Listen, we're going to get to Frisco. But first, we got to bust in a locomotive up front, arrest a crazy guy, and I need some volunteers. Okay, I'm in. I mean, if I have to sit out here doing nothing for, nothing for much longer, I'll probably flip out again. This is fun. Hi there, little lady. The little gear girl is peering out of the window of the train, clearly bored out of her mind. Hi there. You busy? No, all my toys and friends are in their luggage, and it's boring, and I hate it. You know, want to help me out with something real important? Huh? Like what? Want to help me apprehend a dangerous criminal, little girl? Well, a bad guy took over the engine car, and I need some people to help me break down the door and arrest him. Mister, I I'm just a little girl. I know. That's not a good attitude. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do something just because you're a little girl. But, uh, okay, yeah, we'll bust that crook's face in. Wow, that's the spirit. You gotta pay me in advance, though. Jeez, you're learning a little too fast. All right, what do you want? Uh, I like stuffed animals. How about a big teddy bear? <gasps> She's great! Okay, mister, you say the word. We'll show that jerk what for. Man's too busy ignoring his daughter. Not... <laughs> Man's too busy ignoring his daughter to not ignore you. Fair enough. Woman is focusing on her knitting and ignoring the general commotion. She must have been knitting the whole trip because the scarf she made could accommodate a whole marching band. Excuse me, ma'am. Whatever it is, I want no part of it. 
I keep to myself, and I have no desire to get involved. Thank you very much. Come on, this is important. Crazy guy stole the train, and I need help arresting him, or you'll never get to Frisco. I'm sure everything will sort itself out in the end, and in the meantime, I have plenty of wool. You pick up the far end of her scarf and pull on the trailing length of yarn. Three or four rows unravel. Here now, just what do you think you're doing? Lady, you gonna help me arrest that nut in the driver's compartment? We're gonna find out the answer to that age-old question, how long is a piece of string? All right, all right. Oof, anything to get off this train and away from you faster. So yeah, this woman's ignoring me. This professional-looking guy is frowning at a sheet of paper and occasionally scribbling on it with a pencil and then erasing what he just wrote. Excuse me, can I, you help me with something? Sorry, I'm busy. Ask my wife or my daughter. God knows she could do with something to keep her occupied. What are you working on? It's quite academic. I'm sure you wouldn't understand. Try me. If you must know, I'm a scholar on foreign antiquities. I'm attempting to resolve this ancient conundrum from the Far East. He shows you a sheet of paper covered with little boxes, some of them which have numbers in them. I'll just solve it for him real quick. That's a Sudoku. My little brother thinks they're for babies. What? Look, this box can't be a three or seven, because you got those there and there, so it has to be a four. Which means it's five here, nine here, and then that's a nine. This can't be, so seven, and this one's a two, and you quickly fill in the rest of the puzzle. Well, damn it, what fun is it if you just solve it for me? Sorry? So, will you help me break down the door to the engine and arrest the Emperor? Well, I guess I've got nothing better to do now. Damn Easterners. So we got everybody. Sweet. You need about 50. 50. It's good to get 50 in all your stats at some point. Me and this army. You and the passengers break down the door very impressively. Though it would have been even better if you'd had some torches and those old-fashioned rakes. Norton's backed up into the corner of the engineer's compartment next to the engineer, who looks over your shoulder and shrugs. So-called Emperor Norton, you're under arrest for the crime of being a total ass. That's not even illegal. It is when I'm in town. Everybody grab him! Except you, Mr. Engineer. I can see you're busy driving the train. Right. Actually, if you could turn around and head on back to Frisco at the next station, that'd be great. Mm, no problem. Ah! Ooh! Ah! Let go! This isn't over! You haven't heard the last of me! Tell it to the judge, Norton. The prison judge. <laughs> that was idiotic. We made... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stick around. High five. You did it! Thanks, boss! No problem. Got the track laid right up to the station now. First ever cross-territory railroad, thanks to the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company. Principally you. You did a real good job, dead man walking. Aw, oh, shucks. Don't mention it. We did it, everybody. We made it out west. It's a one-way train, so there's no sense of going in there right now. The final cutscene's playing. Well, that's convenient. A new, moving show, a new show at the Moving Picture Show. That's the, hey, go look at the cutscene. How you doing, Clincy? What's up with that huge brawl going on over there? Oh, them fellas always blowing off steam. I just let them go ahead and get their aggressions out. As long as they keep over there, away from what furniture I got left. Can you tell me about Frisco? It's a fine town. A fella named Samson Frisco. Yeah, mining fever. Okay, we did that. Fair enough. Let's go watch the cutscene. Yeah, I'm sure everything's going to be great. It looks like somebody on that train got a job as a protectionist. Would you like to watch this movie? It's free, because movies have only recently been invented, and nobody's figured out that they can charge for them yet. No, doing this will not change anything about the world or your character. Cutscene's over, you'll be right here, and you can keep playing if you want. Show me that beautiful bean footage. Some folks say endings don't matter. But other folks, they like to know how things turn out. Consequence of their actions, like... With the trains running again, Fresco thrived. People came from all over to seek their fortune, but thanks to you, they didn't have to do it while on fire because some cow attacked their wagon. Look at all those people. That's a lot of people. With the railroad completed and Norton ousted, Smee found himself out of a job but in of an opportunity. After being elected mayor, he managed the growth and infrastructure of Frisco with compassion and pragmatism. 1944, Frisco was named the most reasonable city by the Tuesday Evening Post. Good job, Smee. I assume if we give Norton the crown, it'll be him there, and he'll have done something stupid. The idea of city life didn't appeal to Susie much. After you and she parted ways, she moved down the peninsula ways and settled a cow's bane farm, still fighting the good fight in her own way. 
Aw, I love the way you shoot. If you come out with Doc Alice, she sets up a clinic. A free clinic. There's a lot of people with weird ailments. After she finished getting the bakery boys up and running, Louise moved to Frisco and opened up her own shop, specializing in artisanal breads and pies. Unfortunately, after some unknown vandal who kept breaking in at night and destroying all the pies, she had to switch to a breads-only business model. That's... is that something I can help with? I like pie? Thanks to your assistance, Hobart Bupert got the photography bug, or should we say the photography owl? Anyway, he opened an art gallery, so citizens of Frisco would never again have to suffer from the inability to see pictures of owl skeletons whenever they wanted. Good job, Hobart. Kurtz left the fort and set up shop in Frisco. His cult, uh, fitness group skyrocketed in popularity. The growth was entirely due to word of mouth, because the first rule of Kurtzfit is that you cannot stop talking about Kurtzfit. I think that's when I realized it was a CrossFit joke. No Kurtz, no pain. No Kurtz, no gain. Oh, no Kurtz pain, no Kurtz gain. Kurtz till it hurts. With your help, the professor gained enough knowledge about El Vibrato technology to start building his own. He opened a very successful consumer technology store in Frisco, and for decades, people spent all their time staring at little computers in their hands instead of talking to one another. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I didn't get that last time. I didn't get that last piece of uh, stuff. He's so happy. Musicians you sent to Dirtwater formed a band called Wasco and the Pufferfish. They had a few hits, then mostly faded in obscurity, though you'd occasionally hear Wasco in a radio ad years later. Aww. That's pretty good. Hey, the cook. Old angry cook. Wasco and the Pufferfish. Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo Bill retired from the killing trade and made a killing opening up a restaurant in Frisco. Buffalo, 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 Wild, Wild, Wild Wings. Oh, that's nice. I'm happy for him. Look at all those happy people. You solved all of Breadwood's problems. With the increase in morale and civic resources, they were able to clear the weeds from the road and fix the well and the broken hitching post. There wasn't even enough left over to give the mayor's office a new coat of paint. Refresh the facade on the buttery biscuit, add a second story to the bunkhouse. They even managed to get that horse into rehab. Oh, look at that. Can I see the horse? Just be walking in a suit now. <laughs> Good job. Olive Garden and Cactus Bill lived happily ever after. A wandering band of goblins found that although brought a weather machine you unearthed and formed a cult around it. Due to the increased rainfall, both Olive's garden and her marriage were extremely prolific. Aww. Oh, God. She made little penis cactus babies. I mean... I mean, they're happy. That's... That's important. Chuck continued to run his blood and breakfast without incident. Accident, scandal, or allegation for many years. He never did get his key back, though. I'm be chasing someone. You won four of the reenactment scenarios at Fort Memoriam. They still talk about you. Remember that dead man fella came through here? Yeah, he was really good at this game. you have any more root beer? Uh, shit. <laughs> With your help, Roy Bean's Jelly Bean Museum became the talk of the town. Well, they had to build a town nearby, but once they did, hooey! Oh, look at that guy. He's, he's stoked. He's loving it. Dirtwater became, relatively speaking, a thriving metropolis. Thanks to your efforts as a commerce ambassador and all-around helpful stranger, the once sleepy town became a shining oasis in a barren land. Every man, woman, and child in the town knew your name. Even put up a little plaque with your name on it in your old room with the jewel. Aww. As a wizard. <laughs> well, I fixed the piano man. There's the slop guy. I like that hat. That little top hat in the front. As for you, 
After your adventure, you settled in Frisco and bought a very long, very narrow house. You filled it with souvenirs of your exploits and started an antique hat rack collection. That's why I didn't sell any hats. When you left home, you told Rufus you wanted to seek your fortune. Unfortunately, you ended your adventure nearly penniless. Oh well, maybe Rufus can find somebody else to look up to. Shit. <laughs> all my hats. Will it be all my hats or just most of my hats? There's my turnip crown. Oh. Oh, we're missing hats. God, that's probably an achievement. I know you get hats for killing the gang members instead of taking them in alive. That's a lot of bones. I wonder if those are the two hats that are missing, actually. Shit. In 1906, all the remaining cows in the West were simultaneously activated by some kind of signal from hell. They thundered east, forming a gigantic, single-minded herd. The bovine taint in your blood, not dulled by any passage of time, compelled you to join them. The infernal sadist, Bov Duke Bovicus, took command of the cow army and drove it east into dirt water. Oh shit. We done bad. Fortunately, a gang of rodeo clowns swept in at the last minute and slaughtered the herd just before it reached dirt water. Unfortunately, all the townsfolk of dirt water had a hard time sleeping for pretty much the rest of their lives. Seriously, it was a grisly sight. 420 years later, buried deep beneath the ground, ancient machines silently, silently stopped doing the thing they were built to do. It's probably fine. You and everybody you know are dead by then, and most of humanity's moved to space. Still, though, it's a shame about the planet. There were some cool bars there. Thanks for playing. The credits of Loathing. So yeah, there's a couple endings we can clean up a little bit. I want to try a couple things. Well, we can sell a bunch of crap, because we're kind of done. Christopher Floyd. All our families. Everyone played play the demo at PAX, beta testers. Uh, get some money. Make Rufus more proud of us. Uh, we can kill Duke Bovicus first. I want to... Um, Kingdom of Loathing. Kingdomofloathing.com I don't think browser games are a thing anymore. Hell with it, let's run long. And we'll do the DLC as a separate episode. Let's go to the circus. Ba -do -boom. Ba -do -ba -do -boom. Hey fellas. Yeah. Shut up, you nerds. Barnaby Bob. Yeah. Uh Bounties? Yeah, okay, so that's that's all. It's just fangs, rings, ungler horns. Oh, did I make that weapon? I meant to. Oh, I made the boots instead, that's right. Well Fort All Dead, you say. I do want to play again with the uh, prospector and with uh Gary. See their endings. The, the sidekicks are neat. Deploy forces to Bonnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus. Bob's gonna be <laughs> quite the surprise tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, but my fudge. Uh, I suppose that's fine. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to go to Deepest Delve and actually turn on Roberto's containment. Whatever he is. Oh, it's a huge skeleton. Go away. Rampage and Undead Bigfoot. Ain't nobody got time for you. We're doing end of game stuff. That's neat how you can go fuss with things and then just watch the cutscene again. That's a really cool idea. Which I was worried about since they have an autosave for everything else. As I said, I might try to do hard mode as a stream or something. Because you can't die and you can't sleep, so you can't. Can I do the bridge? Yeah, I think I can do the bridge. You just can't do all of Breadwood. And you can't do infinite encounters. You can do like five of an infinite encounter a day, so it really cuts in your experience. Okay. So now we got no country for old gods. Whatever that was felt pretty important. Oh, I got a crown. 
And you can just give a crown to the dude, which I want to try at some point. Crown-shaped El Vibrato Helmet was bestowed on you for a very noteworthy achievement. You don't precisely understand. This is one of the ones you can give to the dude. But if you don't give... Like, the issue is, you don't know you need a crown until you talk to him. And, uh... Yeah. I'm uh, gonna sleep. Sleep. So the clowns will do their thing, and let's go sell a bunch of stuff. Dang, horse threw a rod and I fell off. Busted a dancing arm. Yeah, sure, we're going to dirt water. Oh, I'm missing a vibrato item, too. There's another thing that lets you see hidden things. But... I don't know, I guess I didn't need that. I thought I'd need that for Robert. The thing is, you just have to learn enough of the words, or once you know what the buttons do. This horse smells weird. So we need to sleep. There goes all my food bonuses. You dream you're climbing a mountain with a red-suited dwarf while fleeing from your mother. You were torn apart by rats. Jesus. The dreams could be slightly more pleasant. Uh, something out of Infernal Nether. Uh, oh, also on fire. Everything's on fire. Am I on fire then? No, it adds to on fire. Okay. Let's see. I should be running against boots. Let's do the bag since I'm not. So they gave my bear away. Um, there we go. Nice. This bag should not have been made. <laughs> oh, make myself angry first. Okay. Let's go check on that circus. Uh, sure, dig it up. Why not? Old silk trousers. That's new. Well, the skeletons sure did a real number on this place. There's pretty much nothing left. <laughs> Clowns. Oh, nice. Plus my moxie. Looks like them skeleton fellas did everything short of salt in the earth behind them. One less nightmare to deal with. Yep, sad to see the back of them. I'm forgetting anything. Susie looks pretty low on ideas for its side dalliances now. Saves crater to the ground as if thrown a fair distance. Guess the skeletons brought explosives with them. The dial looks complex and has weird squiggles instead of numbers. Fortunately, the impact knocked it wide open, so it doesn't matter. It contains a few scorched and blackened fragments of what you think might be eggshell and a pretty nice pair of boots that seem undamaged. Barnaby Bob's burnished boots. Oh, that'd be kind of nice for early in the game. That'd be great. These must be Barnaby Bob's spare boots. Wonder why he kept them in his office safe. And clown war. Settle down, Tim. Uh, let's see. Um, no, not yet. Okay, let's see how that changes. So now the clowns can't come in and save the Friscoans. I got a couple more endings I want to look at. Also, uh, the thing where we're cow corrupted and uh, go doing the thing, that's bad. We should fix that. Don't matter. I like that you can clip through it, too. I forgot to fix my money. Norton Smee, Most Reasonable City. Susie Made Calbane. Bakery Boys. Albert Boopert. A great name. Fitness Group. Uh, the Professor. <laughs> We got Wasco. Uh huh. Buffalo Bill. Redwoods Problems. Olive Garden and Cactus Bill. Didn't see any reason not to turn the uh, Rainmaker on. <laughs> Remember that guy? You got any more root beer? Bloody Museum. Mm hmm. Spirit Water. My antique hat rack. Suppose if I'd done that, I wanted to help people. The cow army drove to Dirtwater. 
The herd did some damage to dirt water, but the town managed to mount a pretty good defense, in part due to your fortifying assistance. Cow army seemed to run out of steam after that. Maybe they went back to hell. Thanks to your cleverness that the world is not destroyed 420 years later. On the contrary, it remains, remains undestroyed for millennia. Future generations don't know they should thank you, but they definitely should. Cool. Thanks for playing. Uh, you gotta go through the credits every time. That's a bummer. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna change a couple more things. Ba -do, ba -do, do, ba -do, ba -do. Oh, the end. Yeah, I'm aware. Thank you. Uh, let's get get rid of my newfangled gun. Back my red hot pistol. And let's get off of this one because I probably want to sell it. Um, yeah, Ranger badge. Why not? Lowers my mysticality, but whatever, we'll be fine. I want to sell as much crap as I can. Also, I want one of each of these. Really? 3,000? I probably need like 10,000 to be rich. Fine, sell it. I guess that's just for selling. Perfect coffee cup. Yeah, gold medal of adequacy. Geode hat. No idea what to do with that. Hang on to it. I think you can do something with a gold skull, but I'm not sure. It says just sell it, but I don't know. Fine. 16,000 monies. Oh, uh, the newfangled pistol's only 100. That's a shame. Oh, keep wearing the pants, I guess. Yeah, we're getting into stuff's not worth selling. 50,000 for the huge diamond ring, my god. So hopefully that's enough money to impress that little shit bastard Rufus. Sorry, that was needlessly harsh. <laughs> to the curious well. And there's one more, two more things we gotta take care of. I'll try and get this uh, vibrato robot. Uh, where are we at? Uh, band. The band. Booper. That's a picture of Booper. That's not what I want. Curious abandoned well. Okay. Where do I... Okay. Move OBS. Alright, we're good. So. Sorry. So weird. I have no idea how you would figure this out. Just just trial and error. The hell with that. Because they're just numbers. That's why I wasn't able to figure anything out. Because I know from a previous playthrough that all the words I don't know are just numbers now. Okay. So. Press it. So, Ganilla is zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So, I want Ambicus for south, and Chabu for east. Terminal beeps and the boopy floating guy behind you disappears in a puff of glowing squares. Gee, I wonder where he went. Oh yeah. Also, we can make the bracelet just for giggles. Uh, I don't want drone fabrication. Equipment storage. Yeah, that one. A vibrato ring. Make spell vibrato encounters more likely. That's kind of neat. Dirt water! Experience that. Uh, oh, that's fine. It's fine. I don't need to bother. There's stuff to do. Oh, look at the band! Now that it's got a beep booper. Maybe that'll make them more popular. Kellogg Ranch. <laughs> we gotta get un... Oh, I'll just carry the horse. Tim, sorry. I'm, I'm wearing Tim out. As you do.
Okay, we go to the gym. That was this. And then shaky shaky. And we're no longer corrupted. Unfortunately, I'm not already sure why you went through all that again. You feel the corruption leave you though. So now we're no longer corrupted. So. One more thing that I'm not sure how you would know to do it here specifically. Although, if you wander around this area, you get the hammer. If you're corrupted. And if you're corrupted, you get the compulsion to build the hammer. And with the hammer, you come over here. Something tells you ringing this cowbell with your infernal mallet would be a very bad idea. But something else tells you it would be a very good idea. A third thing reminds you, you can just ring it normally. So not quite. So, it's a portal to hell. You hear ominous mooing. Let's scatter our cow's bane around. So if you don't do this, you die. So that's why the cow's bane was important. And the silver barbed wire and the... And the, the, the yeah, that's why you have to find the tannery. Either with the clown camp or with Barnaby Bob. Uh, so yeah. Ring it with the mallet. Who dares summon Duke Bovicus? And why can't Duke Bovicus move? Not cool, bro. Not cool at all. What are you? I am Duke Bovicus. What are you? I'm dead man walking. That's my backside. Duke Bovicus hates you, dead man walking. Release me. Mm, what's in it for me? Oh, Duke no Bovicus knows what you want. Duke Bovicus knows you want power, and Duke Bovicus has it to spare. What say Duke Bovicus beefs you up a little bit, and you let Duke Bovicus go? That sound fair? Sure, why not? Lay it on me. Smart. Duke Bovicus can appreciate the desire for power. He unhinges his jaw and a stream of black fluid sprays out of his throat into your mouth. Ah. I know, right? It's horrible. That said, you do feel more powerful. You got the boon of Duke Bow because you lose hit points. Uh, a lot of your blood's been replaced with liquid evil, so we do get a minor corruption perk. Release me! Nah. Duke Bovicus is getting very angry. He does some more flailing, this time even less dignified than before. I'll leave him to it. Uh, no. Oh. I thought I had to fight him. I guess I just... Oh, uh, but he can't call the cows. Hmm. That might be everything. I think we're good. Let's head on over. Uh, do -do -do -do. Uh, big Mart. Oh, yeah, turn on the monolith. Why not? You get energized. That's a lot of experience. Shit. Yeah, if you're not strong enough, just wander around out here. Yeah, I know. Thanks. I know about the thing. The train. The locomotive. The final cutscene. Okay, what do we got? Things don't matter. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wagons. Not on fire. It's like I need to get to the, the last cutscene. Thanks, Susie. Oh, shit, I missed it. So we got a better version of them. I have to watch it one more time. I forgot about the band. Shit. Bill. So something about the aristocrats. Which, no. We're not explaining that. Okay. Dirt water. My house. When you left home, you ended your adventure with 17,133 meat. Enough to turn a few heads at the country club, but mostly so they can turn back around and make fun of you under the breath. Well, shit! I guess I should have just picked wanting to help people. Okay. 
They thundered east, forming a gigantic single-minded herd. Fortunately, since you somehow managed to trap Duke Bovicus on this side of the ground and cleanse yourself of your bovine blood taint, the army of cows had nobody to lead them. Oh, apparently I would take his place. That would be bad. They thundered east in a chaotic mass. The disorganized herd never even made it to a human settlement. Oh, cool. We don't even have to worry about the clowns. So yeah, they just killed everybody. Good job, everybody. Let's go check on the aristocrats and make sure what that one is. And then we'll call that... Yeah, we're right at an hour. That's perfect. If I hadn't screwed up that, that look at the band... Yeah. I mean, I guess you could go back and pause, but... It gives me a way. To, it gives me something to leave the leave the screen on, and then we'll uh, come back and we'll look at the DLC, which is hopefully stands on its own. That's a pretty good ending for Dead Ben Walking, I'd say. Eh, yeah, okay. Frisco, Mayor of Frisco, Susie. Mm-hmm. Louise. Buppert. Kurtz. Professor. Okay. Performers into dirt water form the greatest band in the history of music. The perfect union of percussion, strings, and technology. They immediately secured their place in the cultural history of loathing. Their songs were innovative. Their stage presence was spectacular. And the liner notes on their albums were extremely clever and are interesting. They call themselves the Aristocrats. There we go. So yeah, best of loathing, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll do a little bit more. We'll see what's left. And then maybe, uh... Don't hold me to it, but I really like the idea of trying to do a hard mode on a stream. So, another day. Until then.